Hello, KubeCon. My name is Eduardo Silva, and as part of this KubeCon Europe uh, Fluent Bit Lightning Talk, we are going to introduce a little bit about the Fluent Bit project, which is part of the Fluent ecosystem, but also talk a little bit uh, about the roadmap and the exciting news that we have for this year. I'm going to share the screen right now so you can see the presentation. Well, uh, as, you, as I said, um, Fluentbet is one of the projects of the CNCF, right? And actually, the goal of this lightning talk, as I said, is to share uh, some news, but also give you a little bit of background on what kind of problems the project solves. So my name is Eduardo Silva. I'm the founder of the company called Caliptia, where we offer enterprise uh, offerings on top of the Fluent D and Fluent Bit ecosystem. And I'm also the creator of this project called Fluent Bit. Uh, Fluent D and Fluent Bit both are part of the CNCF graduate project. Actually, in technical terms, Fluent Bit is a graduated sub project under the umbrella of Fluent D both under the Apache license and both actually are part of the same huge ecosystem that you're planning to use or are using now. And let's talk about logging pretty briefly about how this operates, how this works, so you can get a, a clear vision about what is expectations from a login tool. Actually, login tries to solve the problem on how do we collect messages from applications, services, even hardware, right? And try to process this information and centralize it in a place where we can uh, deal with it or perform data analysis. Most of the log information uh, comes as a text format. But nowadays, the biggest problem is that with microservices and with the new cloud infrastructure and the new ways to deploy applications, we have more data than we used to have before. Right? And you have more data, you have more challenges, right? How do I analyze this information? But to analyze it, I need to centralize it, but also collect it. When an application generates a, a message, this message also can come in different formats. And usually, this, there's no unified format for login messages, right? There's a, some trends in the market to try to unify, but this has been there for more than 30 years. Actually, but what actually is really important for the scope of this presentation and for the project itself is that in an environment, it could be a cluster environment with Kubernetes distributed or just normal, normal environment, right? What is important is that we have to understand that our data most of the time will come in a raw text format without a structure, without a schema. But we need to be able, from an application perspective, as a log processor, be able to handle this uh, message. Actually, and when the application starts generating messages, all these messages go most of the time to the file system. Sometimes you can shape it over the network, but in normally in production, you just write to this and then you just let the log processor collect all these messages. And then uh, the whole goal of this is not just to deal with the messages, as I said at the beginning, the goal of this is to deal with data analysis. And data analysis will happen after you have been able to collect all the information and centralize the information back to a database or any kind of a storage cloud provider like Amazon S3, Elastic. And there are many options in the market. Right? So the whole purpose of logging is to be able to connect point A to point B but also in the middle be able to do some kind of data processing, right? It's not just read and write. Actually, you read the data and you want to perform some data modifications on, on the data. For example, if you are in a Kubernetes cluster, the ideal case will be when you get the data, be able to talk to the API server and enrich your logs with labels or annotations depending on the case. Now, who use Fluent Bit? Actually, it's being used by all the major cloud providers in the world. And as part of the statistics, uh, Fluentbit is deployed more than 2 million times per day, just from the public information that we have in our public repositories. But also, we got some insights that there are many VMs, there are many mere battle servers that are running Fluentbit. And of course, we don't have metrics from, from that perspective. But uh, if you are attending this session, 
you can be pretty confident that you are getting into the right choice. Now, as part of FluentBet, one of the important things uh, is the rollback, right? It's not just about to solve the problem that we have now, but what are other problems that we're getting uh, reported by the community? And these problems are not just technically uh, tied to FluentBet, but also to market trends or different needs that we have in the infrastructure. Right. So we're happy to announce that as part of this year, we started the journey where FluentBit will handle native metric support. Right. What this means. Usually you used to have your own agents for logs and a separate agents for metrics. But from a community perspective, from the Fluent ecosystem, we always got asked many times, and I'm talking maybe more than 10, 15 times why you don't implement the metric support, why you don't unify these needs in a single agent, which is fluent bit, which is pretty lightweight, so we can get rid of some extra agents that we have. It's not because of the other agents are bad, actually they're really good, but since we are using the fluent ecosystem, we would like to have a, a more unified experience. And when we talk about metrics, there are many corner cases, right? The first one is that some application ship log messages, but these log messages sometimes are log messages, right? Debug, error, info warning, but sometimes they also ship metrics as logs. For example, they just ship a JSON map and they have a bunch of key values where they say, hey, this is a counter, this is a gouge, or an aggregation for a different value. And if we handle that information as logging, maybe we are uh, losing the opportunity to do more processing on that data and do more smart things. Also, there's the other corner case that says, where since FluentBit is running on every single node of our cluster, why you don't collect the host metrics, disk, swap, CPU, memory, and so on. Also, we have application that ship metrics, right, natively. So if you embed is there, why we cannot handle that, right? And if we talk about uh, what is being used in the market right now, uh, uh, most, I would say 80, 90% of the industry is aligned nowadays within the cloud native space with Prometheus and open metrics, right? So uh, as a fluent project and as a project maintainer, we, we decided that we're going to go on that way. Right now, we're going to support native metrics support in FluentBit, but work towards the integration with the Prometheus ecosystem, right? Which is on top of open metrics. Now, an aside, we know that Open Telemetry, which is a sandbox project in the CNC, is being developed to try to solve all this complexity of logs, traces, and metrics, right? Uh, right now, the, the project, that project is growing, um, but we aim to integrate with Prometheus first. And once open telemetry get a more maturity level, we're going to integrate from a protocol perspective, right? FluentBet for us is like a Gnostic software, and we aim to communicate with all vendors, all protocols possible, right? So if I can share here pretty quickly, I'm just going to share in my screen, we have a POC of how we are building our own um, node exporter in FluentBet. Actually, it's a stripped down version of the one that you find in Prometheus, but we're trying to solve the, the needs for our own users. So I'm just going to run from the command line. So it would be node exporter. We're going to send data to the standard output. And as you can see, we will able to collect a bunch of information from the host. Well, actually, this is my, my personal laptop. We are collecting data from CPU scaling frequency, a memory information, the total bytes. You can see they have 16 gigabytes on this laptop, the available memory, and so on. But what we did here is to try to replicate, a, collect natively all the metrics from the system, but implement a full layer where we can translate these metrics to different payloads expected by the users, by you. For example, you would expect to have this information in Prometheus format, right? And we're, we are doing that uh, at the moment. Now, as a second uh, big thing that we have as part of the roadmap for this year is the integration with WebAssembly. 
right? And uh, there's a, a lot of, bunch of information about WebAssembly in, in the market right now. And the whole goal of WebAssembly is that you can create, you can program any kind of function, right? And originally in any language and make it run on the browser. But right now, that WebAssembly engine is being translated to backend services. So uh, one of the problematics that we have in, in FluentBit is that from a community perspective, people said, hey, I have struggled to write C code, right? Writing C sometimes is not that easy. You need a bunch of best practices, experience, because a uh, managed memory, you know, is, could be, you can make it really good, sometimes generate a lot of problems. But they say, you know what, my team, has experience with Go, has a, is getting experience with Rust, but also we do some JavaScript. So we go, we work it towards WebAssembly, where now Fluentbit, the backbone, will continue being written in C language, but we're going to have a thin layer where you can write a, and integrate your own Fluentbit plugins in WebAssembly using your own language. And of course, the compiler will do uh, its own magic. And from a Fluentbit perspective, Using WebAssembly, we will be able to take your code and run it as an input plugin, as a filter, or as an output to deliver data to different destinations. I would say that this is one of the, the huge things that are coming up this year. And we are really, really excited because we see that the project uh, started as a small forwarder. Now it's doing stream processing, distributed stream processing, actually. We have SQL on it but also we are going to provide and give a better, more flexibility to our developers from the user's perspective. Okay, thank you so much for watching this uh, presentation. I know this was uh, so just a few minutes of uh, how Flumbit works, what are the, the next things that are coming up. So please stay in town, uh, we have many news, I know that uh, during the conference, we're going to see more news about the status of metrics and the status of a web assembly. So if you have any question or also you would like to share more use cases with us so we can we can work together on those challenges, just let us know. Uh, my personal email is that is there, eduardo at calipto.com. So thank you so much for coming. And if you have questions, I will be in the chat. Thank you.